Hi, this is Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, right back here on Wager Talk TV with a special NBA video for you for this entire week. And I'm going to preview all four NBA playoff games covering Saturday, Sunday, and even Monday, the next three days and nights of NBA playoff action, all four active series in the conference's semifinal round. I'm going to get to all four of those games. I'm going to let you know which way the public is betting and leaning on both the sides and totals for all four NBA playoff games for this week and Saturday, Sunday, and Monday on this video in just a moment. Quick reminder, though, that if you're joining me this week and it's not too late to get a fantastic special offer, I want many of you first-time users to get on board and try out my service. So I've come up with a very special promo code for this weekend and this weekend only, Steve29. Steve29. And what that does is it gets you the next three days, pro baseball and pro basketball, all sports, baseball and basketball. I entered the weekend MLB on an 80% run. NBA playoffs have been red hot, 28 and 13 NBA run over the past several weeks. Isn't this a great time aboard to get both my baseball and basketball for an extremely low, low rate? Cost of entry has never been lower. $29 gets you the next three days and nights. Baseball and basketball, all sports. Steve29, you have to use that promo code. Go to the three-day drop-down, choose the three-day package for 69 in a promo code Steve29, you get it for just 29 Whether you're doing it Saturday or Sunday, you get three full straight days and nights of all sports, baseball and basketball. Once again, this weekend only at wagertalk.com. Steve29 for three days of all sports. My personal best bet, same games I'm using for just $29. Steve29, wagertalk.com. Let's take a look at all four NBA playoff games for this weekend, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. We'll start in schedule order with the Saturday night game, game three in the Western Conference semifinals between the Jazz and Clippers. I had a best bet on the Jazz in game one. I put it out at minus four. Then Conley was announced out. I didn't mind because the backup has played great. And the Jazz just came out really sluggish, but they turned it on in the second half. They won by three. So most people got a push because that was what the line was all afternoon and night. But I put it out early for minus four, and I counted it as a loss. So still 28-13 and 13 in the NBA, even with that near miss. And guess what? The Clippers are now in an 0-2 situation back home as they lost game two as well. But the Clippers have been here before, been here, done that, right? However, the public doesn't believe so. The public is leaning towards Utah tonight. Uh, the consensus of the public, about 60% is on the Jazz as a dog. Now, that's not a huge public consensus, but those of you that have followed me on the NFL video and the NCAA tournament fade the public, you know that public normally plays favorites and overs. So whenever they're even slightly on a dog, or at this point, 60% of the dog, it's a bit of a red flag for me. So even though this line might look inflated, um, it's probably not because the sharp money has actually pushed the Clippers higher tonight. This line opened four, four and a half. It's now five as of Saturday afternoon. And yet the public is back in the Utah Jazz. So we have a bit of a sharp square divide here with the Utah Clipper game. And something else I want to point out about this, first time I've ever seen this in my 25-year career, and that's the situations where these first half lines are as high, if not higher, than the full game line. Back on Thursday night, the uh, first half Milwaukee line closed three and a half. The game line was three and a half. The Bucks won the first half and the game by three. Last night on Friday, Denver Nuggets, one and a half point favorite for the game, two and a half point first half favorite during the afternoon. Never seen that before. That's because teams down 0-2 over the past 15 plus years had coming into this season had gone 90 and 41, 65% against the spread in the first half of game three. Once again, teams down 0-2 have covered the first half of game three nearly 65% of the time. But the reason a lot of these systems stop working after a while is because it becomes public information. The betters and the odds makers start adjusting, and we're seeing that happen in, in real time. Uh, once again, that Milwaukee game on Thursday night, the angle did not work. It missed by half a point because of the inflated line. Uh, the Denver line did not matter on Friday. They were blown out from the start. But here we see it again. The Clippers are a four-point first half favorite. The full game line is only five. Just something to keep in mind if you're looking at that first half. Uh, but once again, the public is on the Jazz, and we do have an inflated first half line, once again, based on that bounce back situation. Two games on Sunday in the NBA playoffs. Uh, first game on the schedule Sunday afternoon is at 3 o'clock Eastern, also on ABC, like Saturday night's game, and that's the Nets and the Bucks. I referenced this game from Thursday with that unusual situation, once again, with the first half line closed at 3.5, just like the full game line, and the odds makers were sharp with both of those numbers. Milwaukee missed covering by half a point despite winning the first half and the full game both by three. They failed to cover both by half a point. Yet what's interesting is it does not look like the public is on the Bucks here. And I guess after seeing that ugly low scoring affair, I can understand why. But they look for the Nets to bounce back. Uh, Nets are looking like a fairly public play here on Sunday afternoon from the consensus. What's interesting about the total in this game, as I mentioned earlier, the public almost always leans towards the over 60, 70% of the time. 
all the playoff games last week and this week, they've been basically on the over in every game. This is the one play over the past week in which I think you could say there's a little bit of public consensus on the under. It's kind of split 50-50, but once again, that's pretty low, and that's almost telling me it's a public consensus to the under, and not a surprise. We saw the ugliest offensive game of the playoffs on Thursday night when Milwaukee won that game 86-83. You know, I mentioned my 28-13 and 13 NBA run over the past month. I had that near miss with Utah by a point. Well, I had another near miss. I had Milwaukee minus three and a half. They missed up by half a point. So otherwise, 28-11 and 11 in all other play NBA games over the past month. Even those close to the miss is still a great run. And to bring that up because if you had told me beforehand that the Nets were going to have only 83 points on basically 36% shooting from the field and only 25% shooting from beyond the arc, I would have been even stronger in Milwaukee. So I don't know what to make of that. And not a good sign for the Bucks. Yes, they got the win. They have some life now down just 2-1 in this series. But still, they got to turn things on offensively. They've shot 45% or less in all three games so far. Meanwhile, the Nets had that terrible, stinking performance, as I mentioned Thursday. But keep in mind, they shot 47 and 52 percent in their first two wins. Yet the public is leaning under in this one. Uh, they're kind of a recently biased type of public. Uh, they go with what they've seen most recently, whether it be the NFL or the NBA playoffs, as you all know. Um, so there is some public lean towards the under. Of the four games, this is the one they're leaning under. And once again, the Nets look like they're going to be a fairly public play in this one as well. And let's talk about the line difference in this game. As I mentioned earlier, Milwaukee closed as a three-and-a-half-point favorite in Game 3. Keep in mind, they were a one-and-a-half to two-point road favorite in Game 2 with Harden out. And now, all of a sudden, Brooklyn is a one-and-a-half to two-point road favorite in Game 4. So just some dramatic point spread swings, uh, really crazy. Four or five points within games here in this series. Public, though, likes, once again, the Nets and the under on Sunday afternoon. Sunday night game. Phoenix-Denver, fourth game of that series, and it very well might be the last game of this series. In fact, if history is any barometer, it likely will be so, and the Phoenix Suns are a three-point favorite now for that reason. And once again, a huge line swing. Denver would close as a two-point home favorite in game three. They were not competitive. In fact, they only won one of the four quarters in that game, despite the MVP Jokic having a huge game, 32 points, 62 points, rebounds, and assists combined. His total was 47 and a half. He went well over that. And you would have thought if he had a big game that the Nuggets would play better, but they just had nothing else. Aaron Gordon not earning that $25 million contract, to say the least, as a role player. And keep in mind, Nuggets suffered a real blow a couple months ago when Jamal Murray was ruled out for the rest of the season. I kind of feel bad for Denver. They really could have been a contender in the West. They had the MVP, but they don't have that secondary player that's so important come playoff time with Jamal Murray. And if history is any indicator, um, it's definitely an indicator the series is over. No team has ever come back 0-3 in the NBA playoffs. That's not going to happen here with Denver, the inferior team. The question becomes, can the Nuggets force a Game 5 back in Phoenix? Historically, teams get swept more times than not when they're down 0-3, and that, once again, is why we've seen the Nuggets go from a two-point favorite in Game 3 to now a three-point home dog in Game 4. Uh, a little bit early here as I do this video Saturday afternoon. We don't have a lot of consensus data because they just played last night. Uh, but it does look like the Suns are going to be the public side in this game from the early numbers I'm seeing, and that's not a surprise. Uh, once again, uh, nobody wants anything to do with the Nuggets, especially after they laid an egg in what was a good spot historically for teams to play well in Game 3 down 0-2. Um, doesn't look like there's going to be much money on the Nuggets from the public. So as of early this weekend, Suns look like the uh, consensus in this one. And I would expect them to be leaning over, too. Uh, they have leaned over in most of these games so far in the series. Uh, but once again, Denver didn't look great offensively in the last couple games. so might not be as strong of an over. I think the consensus in this one will most likely be the Phoenix Suns on Sunday night. Hey, one last game to get to on Monday between the Sixers and Hawks. Quick reminder, though, that you better get in on this promo code before Monday because it expires this weekend. Very special offer. I, I love the feedback in the comments below. Leave me comments, thumbs up, subscribe to Wager Talk TV. And that's why I do these promos. That's why I do these special codes because I want to reward my loyal viewers. I appreciate the support on a weekly basis here on Wager Talk TV. And this is a good one. Cost of entry has never been lower. $29 gets you three days and nights of all sports. Every baseball and basketball best bet that I am personally using. Same games I've won with consistently for 25 years as a full-time professional handicapper. Those are the exact same plays you get each and every day as a client. Eight and two, 80% baseball run this week. Longer term, 28 and 13 NBA run the past several weeks. It's a great time to get on board. Tons of strong best bets this weekend. Whether you sign up on Saturday or if you're getting this video on Sunday, don't worry. You get three days and nights whenever you sign up, but you must do it either Saturday or Sunday because this promo expires this weekend and this weekend only. Steve29, Steve29, Steve29 gets you $29 all sports, three-day all access 
It's normally 69. Use the three day drop down menu in the All Sports and put in promo code Steve29. You get three days for just $29. Wagertalk.com. Hey, final game we want to talk about here is that Monday night Eastern Conference game four between the Sixers and the Hawks. You know, it's funny. I had the Sixers as a best bet Friday night, an easy double digit winner for my clients. I had them in game two also, part of that 28 and 13 NBA run, back to back winners with the Sixers in games two and three. Yet I felt like I was on the contrarian side on Friday night, which is really unusual to say that you have the number one seed in the Eastern Conference in a 1-1 series, yet you feel like you're the contrarian. Um, so I felt really good with the Sixers, and it was really never in doubt. Huge third quarter. That's where they separated. And keep in mind, they were down by 20 points at halftime in game one. Came back and outscored the Hawks by 16 to lose by only four in the second half. They then won games two and three each by 16. So if you take away the first two quarters, over the last 10 quarters, the Sixers are plus 48 points over the Hawks. So it does appear like they're pulling away in this series. And I guess the public has started to catch on to that fact. Once again, not a lot of public consensus data as I do this Saturday because the game's a couple days away and they just played the previous night. Um, but it does look like the public's going to be on Philadelphia in this one. And they were a little bit on Atlanta in game three. So they were on the Hawks at plus one or pick them, minus one, whenever you were getting those lines. Yet now they're on Philly at minus three. So they're giving up a couple points in line value now back in Philly more. That's just how the public thinks. You know, once again, recency bias. Um, but it does look like Philly's becoming more of a public play. Hey, look, it's been a great season for Atlanta. They were 14 and 20 on March 1st when they made the coaching change to Nate McMillan. They've gone 32 and 14 on all games since. But they are off back to back losses, and it looks like the public has started to jump ship. I'll have more information on this game. I'll have more on the public consensus on Monday, 3 p.m. Eastern, live right here on Wager Talk TV with Ski Prophet Rob Vino and Joe Ranieri as we have NBA tip off. So be sure to check back Monday, 3 p.m. Eastern, live right here on Wager Talk TV for in depth analysis of Phoenix, Denver. And also, I believe it's Utah LA Clippers game five that night as well. In the meantime, though, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts on the NBA playoff games this weekend. Leave me some comments below. You know I love my comments. I love interacting with you all here on Wager Talk TV. Give the video a thumbs up if you like the content. Make sure you are subscribed. I know many of you are, but make sure that subscribe button is clicked. And most importantly, take advantage of that promo code, Steve29. It expires this weekend. Three days and nights, the next three days and nights of all sports, every baseball and basketball best bet I release for just $29, Steve29 at wagertalk.com. Best of luck this weekend. Check back on a daily basis right here on Wager Talk TV for more great content. In the meantime, this is Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, wishing you the best of luck. I'll talk to you soon.